It's early morning at New Bolton Center, the large animal hospital and research facility of the School of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. New Bolton is located on 700 acres of picturesque countryside and farmland, about 30 miles southwest of Philadelphia. As you enter the grounds, you're struck by the beauty and tranquility of the setting, while behind the scenes is a highly energized and motivated community dedicated to scientific research, to teaching, and to providing extraordinary medical care for large animals, especially horses. To get an idea of the depth of what happens here, we offer a glimpse of some of the things that go on at New Bolton Center on any given day. It's 6 a.m., and since daybreak, a herd of wild horses has been frolicking about in this beautiful pasture, which also happens to be a laboratory for Dr. Sue McDonald, one of the foremost authorities on equine behavior in the world. Today, Sue's working with Kena Grogan, who hopes to one day follow in her footsteps. One aspect of the research conducted here concerns the landmark finding that the social status of the stallion within the harem has a great bearing on his reproductive behavior, making Sue's research of great value to the horse industry. And uh, we also need to get blood samples on all the, the stallions and get testicular measures. And, uh, oh, we have eight new foals and we need to get hair samples on them for DNA testing. About a quarter mile away, the Holstein cows at the Marshack Dairy are lining themselves up for milking while they're monitored through computer chips that track performance and, to some extent, health. And we'll do that for cow number 151. The conductivity measurement is measuring the amount of infection or white blood cell counts in the cow's milk to tell us if the cow is sick and if this spikes to a very high level then we would want to have a veterinarian check the animal to see about her health status. What they learn here is of great interest to the agricultural industry, which in Pennsylvania is essential to the state's economy. 7 a.m. Back at the George D. Widener Hospital, the morning shift of residents, interns, and support staff are already busy with rounds and chores for the current hospital patients. Each year, approximately 6,000 cases are handled at the hospital, which operates 24 hours a day, every day of the year. 7.15 a.m. A few doors away, Ann Hope, chief surgical nurse, and her team are preparing for the first procedure of the day in the Moran Surgical Suite, where nearly 1,000 operations are performed each year. This fracture, what it does, it starts on this part of the uh, lower end of the cannon bone, and then it travels up the shaft of the cannon bone, and then no matter how many uh, radiographs you take, you can't see it go anywhere. But we know from experience that these fractures, in fact, come up here, and then there's an occult portion of the fracture that breaks in the middle of the bone. And we no longer fix these with just screws, but we actually use a combination of screws and a bone plate. And the reason that becomes uh, important is because it prevents them from snapping their leg in two in, this, in the middle of the bone. Dr. Richardson is being assisted by Dr. Jen Smith, a surgical resident, as well as an intern who will be observing and learning the surgical procedures. The work here carries on an extraordinary tradition of surgical expertise and innovation developed by veterinarians such as Mark Allen, Jacques Jenny, Charles Raker, and this man, Dr. David Nunnemaker, who is conducting surgical rounds this morning just down the hall in the C. Mellon Klein Orthopedic and Rehabilitation Center. A three-year-old thoroughbred cult who presented acutely lame after breathing, was wearing toe grabs on all four feet, and had significant edema and swelling of the left front fetlock joint. It's 8.45 a.m., and back at the Widener Hospital, Dr. Virginia Reef is teaching another group of interns how to use the new color Doppler ultrasound equipment for diagnosing equine respiratory illness. That's flow in the diaphragm right there, so that's the normal uh, blood vessel in the diaphragm, so you get that kind of aqua green 
Jenny's work in this field over the years has also established New Bolton as a major center for sports medicine, where the first test of the day has already started. Our aim with the research is to try to uh, first describe the physiology of a normal horse and then to be able to use the techniques that we learn from the research to diagnose problems that are going on in horses that are athletes that are poor performing at the racetrack. The interest and potential for Ginny's and Rick's work has led to the construction of the new Scott Equine Sports Medicine Building, which will dramatically increase the research opportunities and the number of clients they are able to serve. It's 9.30 a.m. The surgery is well underway as Dr. Richardson prepares to insert a steel plate in the horse's leg, which will prevent the leg from snapping in the middle when he stands up after surgery. 9.45 a.m. With surgical rounds over, Dr. Nunnemaker is back in his lab where he's involved with ongoing research. His work in orthopedics has led to numerous inventions which aid in a horse's recovery, such as this external fixation device developed for catastrophic bone fractures. It's designed to carry the horse's weight while the bone is mending. The only thing you have to be able to do really is drill two holes in the, in the cannon bone uh, to make this work, uh, and then glue this foot to the plate uh, here. An essential component of the success of New Bolton Center is collaboration and mutual respect. Often, Dr. Nunnemaker works closely with this man, Rob Sigafus, who is in charge of farrier services at New Bolton. Over the years, they have patented different types of orthopedic appliances and have revolutionized the horseshoe by using high-tech exotic polymers and resins to create horseshoes that help heal and enhance performance. This morning, Rob is building an orthopedic device for a patient in Palm Springs. He's using the same graphite material that's used to make stealth airplanes for the Air Force. Only his purpose is to aid in this horse's recovery from a severe ligament injury. 10 a.m. Across campus, Dr. Tom Parsons arrives at the newly constructed swine facility, where they're studying the production techniques currently used in Europe for improving animal welfare. Each swine is tagged with a microchip that allows the producer to adjust the food amounts for each animal to optimize health. The swine quickly learn that through these doors they'll find food. But if a swine gets piggy and tries to get seconds, the computer shuts her out. What we tell the, the industry, what we tell individual uh, swine farmers is that they can see their uh, future here today. And so we think it's important that the university take the responsibility to go ahead and explore some of these new technologies. 10.30 a.m. Another team of students and a faculty member in the field service are headed out for their second call of the day. Each year, nearly 19,000 house calls are made by the William B. Boucher Field Service Unit, providing students with invaluable experience. Often, these veterinarians in the field are the first to identify the signs of animal disease. If real concerns or questions arise, the answers are often found here in pathology. We do approximately 950 autopsies here a year. One of our major goals is to identify diseases which can be transmitted to other animals and, or transmitted to humans. Uh, another goal here being a teaching institution is teaching veterinary students and house officers uh, about our findings. There are many things in live animals that you can't possibly see until they come to us for a complete autopsy. When disease is confirmed, quick action is necessary. That's why the state of Pennsylvania relies on New Bolton Center in the fight against disease and the possibility of bioterrorism aimed at our food supplies. Part of the battle is being won through the development of a detailed database of poultry producers used to pinpoint outbreaks and control the spread of avian influenza. The farms that are indicated in yellow were the farms that were positive for avian influenza in the latest outbreak in December of 2001 and January of 2002. Once we identify which farms are positive, we're able to draw five and 10 mile radii around those farms 
and immediately identify which farms need to have intensive surveillance testing done to see if the virus has spread at all. We had an outbreak in 1997. It cost the state three and a half million dollars to control the disease. With the use of GIS and all the other tools we've learned to control the disease, this time it only cost us less than $400,000. So we believe it's a wonderful tool. While the work here concentrates on stopping the spread of disease, the work underway at the Moren Biomedical Research Center is dedicated to preventing disease and producing healthier animals. Here, world-renowned scientists such as Hans Scholler, John McLaughlin, and Ina Dobrinsky explore the inner workings of the cell with the goal of eradicating disease and producing new forms of nutrients and new breeds of livestock that have built-in immunity to disease. 11.30 a.m. With the surgery just completed, Dr. Jan Smith closes up on Dr. Richardson's patient. Then a well-trained staff carefully moves the 1,300-pound stallion into a custom-made rubber flotation suit and is lowered into a recovery pool introduced at New Bolton Center by Dr. Jacques Jenny, the father of equine orthopedic surgery. The pool is the only one of its kind in the world. Because the horse is an animal of fright and flight, this recovery system has proven extremely successful in safeguarding the fracture repair and the horse as it reawakens from anesthesia. 12 o'clock, a half hour has passed and the patient is conscious. The next step is to get the horse standing as quickly as possible. This is perhaps the most dangerous time in the process for all concerned. But thanks to an experienced staff, the patient lands safely and is back on his feet, ready to walk to his recovery stall within minutes. p.m. It's early afternoon and it's exercise time for this mayor and her new foal, which is having some difficulty learning to feed itself on its mother's milk. He's getting the idea, but needs a little more practice before he can go home. Such conditions are often the result of premature births, which among other serious conditions are handled here at the Connolly Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, more easily referred to as the NICU. Intensive care unit here is very much like a human intensive care uh, uh, unit. A lot of the techniques that we use are very similar to what's used in human medicine. Um, we, our caseload has been growing. Um, we, this year should see about 200 cases. Uh, our neonatal unit is, is staffed around the clock seven days a week. We have um, nurses on the floor all the time. Um, we also have nursing assistants yes. and we have volunteers. We have a, a large group of volunteers that come and help. 2 p.m. Laura Florence is also a farrier at New Bolton. What makes this such a special place is the mutual respect for all disciplines, driven by a compassion for animals and a thirst for knowledge. Today, Laura is working with Dr. James Orsini in assessing a patient with the early stages of laminitis. The entire family has come to New Bolton from Middletown, Delaware to make sure their other family member is getting the best possible diagnosis and care. X-rays are taken and the treatment plan is developed, which fortunately in this case is caught early enough so that a careful and skillful filing of the hooves by Laura will help the horse shift its weight, alleviate the pain, and hopefully eliminate the laminitis. It's three o'clock and the New Bolton community, as well as distinguished guests, gather to dedicate the new Fairchild Aquaculture Center. The research conducted here will help develop this essential resource for food and commerce in Pennsylvania and throughout the country. With this new facility, New Bolton will play a vital role in aquaculture's development through basic research. A quote uh, by Conrad Lorenz, the, the Nobel laureate, uh, it says in reality is there is no other group of animals that even in nature is so plagued with infectious diseases as the fish. This is because fish live, breed, eat, grow, and, and void all in the same environment. 
So indeed, this really is a veterinary species. It's 4 p.m. at the Hoffman Center for Reproductive Research, and Dr. Patricia Serdich is taking some time to teach Christina Liu as they use ultrasound to check the embryo development in this artificially inseminated mare. So that this whole black portion right here is actually the, the conceptus itself. These little lines that we see are fetal membranes. The Hoffman Center is known throughout the horse industry for its work in handling difficult pregnancies and all aspects of equine reproduction. 5 p.m. It's been a busy but normal day at New Bolton, and the good news is that quite a few patients are being discharged. This is Gracie, a one-year-old Westphalia who is ready to go home. Or maybe not. She's probably reluctant to leave the wonderful ambience at New Bolton Center. Ah, now she's ready. Or maybe not. There's really no end to the day at New Bolton Center, only a changing of the guard. Bridget Stewart has just arrived at the NICU to take over the full sitting duties from Susan Sprague. And next door in the recovery stalls, Dr. Jen Smith, the resident who assisted in Dr. Richardson's surgery earlier in the day, checks up on the patient one more time. Being a resident, though, we all know her day is hardly over, as more patients are just now arriving. But the good news is that after 30 minutes, Gracie has decided that the trailer now has the right horse karma. It's time to go home. 2002 marks the 50th anniversary of New Bolton Center. And for the community of friends and the people who work here, going about business as usual is the best possible way to celebrate the spirit that founded New Bolton. A spirit that is still alive and well at New Bolton Center. Personally, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the sort of person who just can't wait to get to work. You know, I love working here. I love doing what I'm doing. Um, to me, being here is like winning the lottery, you know. I like being part of the team. Um, it's, it's definitely a major team effort here. And uh, I like when I'm doing something that I can tell is really worthwhile and really helpful to help this animal. I think if you talk to anybody here as to why they like to be at New Bolton Center, they're going to tell you the same thing, that it's a combination of a great environment and uh, great clients and you know, great people to work with. I think anybody who was involved in starting this uh, place 50 years ago would be extremely proud of what we have today.